Hi there. Um, I just wanted to uh, make a short video about lessons learned from Hurricane Hugo. My daughter Addie requested that I do this, so hopefully this helps you. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, first of all, you need water. Uh, water is important to survive. You need water to uh, be able to flush the toilet and you need water to be able to drink. Those are the two things and cook. So uh, the most important thing of course is potable water and the way I do it is that you get a big plastic uh, garbage can from Sam's or Walmart or Lowe's or wherever you can get one and, and you clean it out real good, uh, clean it out with Clorox and then you fill it up with water. Usually they're about 32 gallons and that means you have enough water for four people for eight days. Uh, then you need Clorox uh, and you'll have to look on line to find out how much Clorox you should put in that 32 gallons of water to keep it clean uh, and potable. But it, the great thing about it is it has a lid so you can put the lid on it so you don't get dirt and dust and other things in it. And uh, you'll be able to drink water from that. Also just uh, gallon jugs that you can put in if you have to put in your freezer. Um, that's a good thing. It, it, it keeps some of your things cold afterwards. It'll keep your freezer cold uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, if it's two or three days, it'll probably survive. If it's not, um, just drink it as water, the gallon jugs that you put in the freezer. Um, also, fill up your bathtub. This is where uh, things like flushing your toilet comes in handy. Um, so fill up your bathtub with water. Uh, you can clean it. You know, uh, you don't need to Clorox it or make it like drinking water, but uh, certainly have it filled. And I always wonder, why do people fill the bathtub before a hurricane? Well, this is why. So that you have uh, water that you wouldn't drink, but water that you need to use. So uh, make sure you have your bathtub filled with uh, water and you'll have some uh, water to be able to use. And when you do uh, afterwards, uh, just the nitty gritty details of it, uh, you need to, um, uh, if, for lack of a better word, if you do number one, then you need to let it sit for a while. Don't flush every time because uh, we don't know when we'll have water back. Uh, of course, uh, if you have to sit down, then uh, it has to be flushed. And um, so, uh, if you do number two, I guess. So may, that's what the the uh, water in the bathtub's for, so that you can get the the uh, water gone. Um, as far as your food's concerned, make sure you get stuff that you can have that's not refrigerated. You need beans and rice. Uh, no, no kidding about that. Um, you need. Uh, canned goods, canned goods that you're going to eat. Don't just go out and buy a bunch of canned goods that you're never going to eat, but canned goods are always good that you have available. If you do have things in your freezer or your refrigerator, especially uh, meat and perishables, those things need to be go, uh, you need to go ahead and cook because they will last longer once they're cooked. So uh, make sure you do that. If you have stuff in your freezer and you're going to, if you're going to vacate, uh, recognize that you're probably not going to be back. Uh, they, when, after Hugo, we weren't allowed back. Those that left were not allowed back for a while. So um, just be ready for that. You might need to move the uh, perishables from your freezer and refrigerator. The last thing you want to do is come back and have your refrigerator uh, stink to high heaven and have to spend ridiculous amounts of time or either throw your refrigerator away because of that. Um, if you have gas, that's good. Uh, I think there was gas after Hugo uh, for the the hot water heater and for the um, other things like the stove and other things that you would use uh, gas for. Uh, I do have extra propane just in case. Uh, I also have a little camp stove that, I, that, I'm use, that I would use but if we have gas available we won't have to do all that but certainly it's there and uh, if, that's a, if you have electricity we're not going to have electricity so just be ready for that. Um, you'll need to have a way to get air into your house so that you'll be cool uh, because there will not be air conditioning. Um, we will not have ice, for instance. Um, ice will be a high, com a high commodity item. Uh, there will not be ice. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in particular that Addie wanted me to cover. Um, I would make sure, also the covering the windows. People don't understand the covering the windows and the taping the windows. I thought I'd say a little bit about that. Uh, the windows are covered because, number one, you don't want them to break. You don't want the wind coming into your house. Once the wind gets into your house, it can do major destruction inside your house. So make sure that you have, or your landlord has your windows covered uh, with, with wood. Um, and uh, that will protect you from that, uh, from the wind. Also, uh, you don't have to cover every single window. The ones that are going to come from the what I would call the ocean side, 
definitely need to be covered. Um, but uh, some you might just want to tape over, and the reason you tape them is because when they break, you want the glass to be contained where it is because uh, very possibly they will break when the pressure goes low uh, and your house is not as low in that temperature, uh, excuse me, in that uh, pressure gradient, then it, it, that change is going to blow windows uh, if it's that severe. But it can blow windows, let me put it that way. So the tape is mainly to keep the windows not intact, but to keep the glass from going everywhere. Uh, a good tarp, it never hurts uh, to have tarp because you might have possibility of, of uh, parts of your roof being uh, removed and when that happens you need to have something over top of it. So have a good tarp uh, that uh, you can uh, put down with staples and things. So uh, also, you know, help your neighbors. It's important. Uh, we are uh, uh, supposed to help other people. So uh, part of your preparation is being ready to also help your neighbor. I've, I've got a chainsaw and other things that, that uh, I'll get working so that I can help as necessary. I'm not going to climb trees. I'm not going to get up there. But if we need to remove trees from the street or something like that, um, we'll certainly do that. So that's, that's the basics. If, if um, you are in a low-lying area or you're on, on the, uh, le the, the ocean side of, of this thing, uh, I recommend you get out of town. There's no reason to hang out. Uh, if you have a shed in the back, the other thing is uh, you might want to put a rope over top of it. Uh, and the rope is not to keep it from moving because it's going to move. Uh, the rope is to keep it from flipping. So if it flips, of course, you won't. everything won't be topsy-turvy inside your uh, shed. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to do is actually anchor it to the um, two posts where they're concreted in on my fence. And then I'll have two posts in the front while I drive, fence posts, I'll drive those in the ground and and tie those down just like I did last time. And we were on the front lines of Hugo, had our shed, and my brother Bert and I literally uh, tied that down just like that. And our shed moved, but it didn't flip. So when uh, when the hurricane came and went, uh, we could open up our shed and use everything that was in there from gasoline that we had stored to um, uh, ta propane tanks and uh, other things that we needed uh, were in the shed and uh, we were able to access those. Uh, so anyway, I hope you stay safe. We'll be praying for you and uh, hope for the best. By the way, uh, <clears throat> one other thing, one other thing. The communication is going to be very lacking. So make sure that you have a radio with batteries. Make sure you have a flashlight with batteries, obviously, because you're not going to have power. That's uh, hopefully, it uh, goes without saying, if you have candles, it wouldn't hurt to have, get them out. Uh, if you don't have candles, go get candles and matches because you're going to need both. Um, but anyway, uh, get you a little radio with batteries in it and uh, so that you can have access to the radio stations. I have one that uses batteries, solar power, and uh, the crank um, I bought a long time ago. still works fine. So, uh, But it doesn't have to be an expensive radio. You just need something because otherwise you're not going to know what's going on because there's not going to be newspapers. There's not going to be internet. There's not going to be uh, television. Television, be, uh, the towers are going to you know, uh, very possibly be hit pretty hard. So... Uh, you do want communication, believe me. You want to know what's going on. Well, where can I get water? They'll have announcements like where can you get water, where can you get ice, uh, important things that will, that will matter. Um, so just uh, be careful out there. Don't do anything stupid. It's, it, it is serious. It's not something to joke around with. Um, but on the other side, you can survive. You can make it. Uh, just be ready for a few weeks of hard times. It's not going to be easy afterwards. So uh, be ready for that. Uh, thank you. God bless. And, uh, and uh, we'll be praying that uh, God uh, protects all those that are here and all those especially that are uh, on the water and those that uh, do very dangerous jobs like our public service men and our men that are going to be taking care of the power lines and other things. So uh, all the best to you and we just uh, hope we can get through this thing with our heads held high and come out on the other side. Thank you. And I do need to say one other thing uh, and that's cash. You need to have small bills. Uh, we're not going to have ATMs afterwards, obviously. There's no um, electricity to have ATMs, so you need small bills. Uh, get a, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars out. Uh, and then, of course, keep it safe. All your things that you uh, want to keep forever, uh, things like your marriage licenses or birth certificates or other things like that, make sure you get them in a plastic bag and keep those with you. Uh, any valuables that you don't want to lose. Uh, if, uh, if your house, if you, even if you leave your house and when you come back, if it happens to be the roof is off or one of the windows is out, you might not ever find some of those things. So any, uh, any valuables that you 
want to keep. Uh, if you have uh, paper pictures, for instance, uh, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you have all that sealed up in a Ziploc bag and, and stays with you uh, wherever you go. That'll uh, help afterwards in the recovery. Uh, you'll be so glad that you kept those things safe. So just want to say those two things as well.